Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Next up is LDL, low density lipoprotein, sometimes called bad cholesterol, and there'll be another video on that, on exactly why it's called bad cholesterol. Anyway, LDL is basically uh, an IDL remnant, right? We said that IDL was a precursor to LDL, and that's uh, basically saying that uh, LDL is a remnant of IDL. Uh, where is it made? It's made in the blood, right? Because that's where the IDL is. Okay. It contains high concentrations of cholesterol esters, as we can see here from this chart. 37 to 38 percent of it, most of it is cholesterol esters. So does this make sense? Let's think about the function. Okay, well, what is the function? The function is to transport um, cholesterol to peripheral tissues. That's its main function. So deliver cholesterol to peripheral tissues. That's its main function. So does it make sense that it would contain a high concentration of cholesterol esters? Well, yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense. That makes all the sense there in the world because it's meant to transport cholesterol. Uh, you'll notice that almost none of these, I mean, they all have really tiny concentrations of cholesterol. And that's because cholesterol esters are the way they're actually stored in these particles so that the cholesterol cannot escape. Okay. Um, now, the LDL can actually be, um, the LDL particle can be endocytosed by the liver and or peripheral tissues. Okay, so uh, that's why I wrote here mainly. Um, its main function uh, is to take these cholesterols, uh, these cholesterol molecules to peripheral tissues. Um, what sort of binding needs to happen for this to occur? So in order for the LDL to be taken up by any cell, uh, APO protein B100 must bind the LDL receptor. And the LDL receptor is actually pretty important. Uh, and the, this, this process of the, of the binding and taking, being endocytosed, um, we discussed in another video. So of um, the LDL, about 60% goes back to the liver, which is a pretty large proportion. But about 40% goes to deliver um, the cholesterol to these peripheral tissues, which is what, what we think about mostly as the function of this. So when the cholesterol is taken up by these other tissues, um, the, the cholesterol can be used as part of the membrane for that cell or for the cells of that tissue. Uh, it can be used as a steroid precursor. It can be used as a vitamin D precursor. All things that we've discussed previously, right? Maintaining membrane fluidity being a precursor to steroids. I'm not sure if we mentioned vitamin D being... It, I'm not sure if we mentioned cholesterol being a precursor for vitamin D, but um, it is. So um, uh, one of the reasons LDL kind of gets a bad rep is that uh, if LDL is in excess of the need of the peripheral tissues, there are these cells called scavenger cells. Scavenger cells. Specifically, they're actually macrophages. Macrophages. They'll basically take up these LDLs uh, in their oxidized form. Okay. Oxidized form, uh, which is, is often shown as ox LDL, okay, and they become foam cells. So when these macrophages take up these LDL particles, they become foam cells. And these things uh, can contribute to the development of atherosclerotic plaques in blood vessels, which obstruct blood flow and can be pretty dangerous and even lethal, okay. Um, so let's kind of see how that works in this big diagram here. So we left off with IDL giving rise to LDL via the HTG, HTGL enzyme. Um, so then we have LDL, and then what LDL can do is it, of course, can take um, its its key function really is to take the uh, cholesterol esters to the peripheral tissues, which are noted here at the bottom left, and the LDL receptor here in blue. LDL receptor, LDL receptor, and it's actually there too, okay, um, will bind the B100 and take up, uh, be taken up into the cell uh, via endocytosis, so that's what that arrow represents, that little tiny one there, that's endocytosis into these peripheral tissue cells, and lysosomes can then fuse with these vesicles and these, uh, the LDL particle will be basically um, uh, 
hydrolyzed and, and broken down into all its components. And so we've got cholesterol as well as the proteins involved uh, in that in that particle uh, that are now part can be used by that cell or by the cells of those tissues. And so basically now these peripheral tissues have cholesterol that they can use, right? And that's the idea behind LDL. Okay. Now, of course, some of the LDL can uh, go back to the liver. Okay. Um, but what can happen is that a lot of, uh, if there's a lot of LDL in the blood and it's not being taken up entirely by these peripheral tissues, what can happen is that Oxidants can kind of get a hold of these LDL particles and oxidize them to oxidized LDL particles. So we have ox LDL over here. And these will be taken up by macrophages. And when the macrophages go through and, and take up these oxidized LDLs, they become foam cells. And these foam cells, if they build up in the intima of the blood vessel, which is a layer of blood in the blood vessels, um, this can form plaques in blood vessels, and this can uh, thicken the, the wall of the arteries, which is basically uh, what atherosclerosis is, and that's that's pretty bad. That can that's um, can cause uh, obstruct blood flow, and of course, blocking blood flow is is very dangerous because tissues need to get nutrients that exist in in the blood. So. Um, this can, is, of course, we're talking about atherosclerosis and hypercholesterolemia. Uh, this is kind of where that uh, will come in. We'll talk more about that later. But I hope that video was helpful in kind of explaining what's going on with LDL. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks, and happy studying.